All right, we've got to talk about wheel speed sensors here. This is a little bit of an overview. Not, not going to take us very long to do it. Uh, it's like everybody is here except Brad, unless I'm missing somebody else. Here's the wheel speed sensors. A wheel speed sensor that is the, the variable reluctance variety is a wire wrapped around a magnet. When you act a wrap a wire around a magnet and run the two wires out and ever these ferrous metal teeth go whipping past this, quit playing with it like when these things go flipping past this thing right here, you're gonna have a signal that looks like that. It's basically now who saw one of these recently? You saw one, right? You and him. Remember you did the the thing on the uh, on there? There's other kind of these, these wheel speed sensors a lot of times are made into the hub. Sometimes you can change them without changing the hub, sometimes you can't. But basically knowing what kind of wheel sensor you got is pretty important. Alright? So your magneto resistive versus variable reluctance sensor. This one right here you might notice is a two-wire sensor. Your magneto resistive sensor is going to have three wires in it, ground signal and power. That sort of reminds you of a sensor, doesn't it? Okay, so you got a circuit board, you got a magnet, you got a magneto resistive circuit here. That's basically how one of those kind of works. And you're going to have a signal that looks like this right here. Uh, and basically as that goes wheeling past there, you might notice that if any of these are cracked, <coughs> basically this has to be a perfect circle on that thing. If any of those are cracked, you're going to have a signal that looks like that when you pull it up on your oscilloscope. If it's damaged, you're going to see it. If it's blocked, you're going to see it, like if it's got metal filings in it or something like that. And so basically you want it to be a nice, even signal that doesn't have any gaps in it or any little teeth or something like that. You'd be surprised how common it is on some kind of sensors. And this is basically what you got going on here. Your bearing cover. You remember when we were talking about bearings the other day, that if you put the bearing in there backwards, you might have it so that you uh, have a bunch of the magnets are facing the wrong way and the sensor won't read anything. All right, so basically you got your magnetic resistance element there. You got a comparator, you got a transistor, there's an output, your constant voltage coming in, and there's your ground. Now, I drew this myself for the article that I wrote that I'm getting this out of, but that's your MRE style. Here's one right here. An analog signal fades with speed. If, in other words, the analog signal, as you go faster, the analog signal not only gets more humps, the, hump, the humps get closer together and it gets taller. So the frequency of the signal is how many humps there are, and the height of it is the amplitude, right? So remember, amplitude is how many there are, frequency is how close together they are. But when you slow down to almost a complete stop, that analog one is so faint that the vehicle, it, the uh, module may not even know the vehicle's moving. Well, he went with, with these other sensors for that reason. Now this particular kind here that's got MREA and MREB with that sensor IC chip can tell which direction it's turning. This one can tell if the vehicle's going backwards or forwards, right? Have you ever thought of uh, whenever somebody was thinking, hey, I'll just run my car in reverse for a while. You remember like the guy on Ferris Bueller's day off and we're going to try to roll the miles off the speedometer going in reverse? Well, that doesn't work because on most all of them, the, the vehicle speed sensor is not telling the speedometer head or the computer or whatever which way it's turning. It just tells that it's turning. So even if you drove in reverse from here to California, you'd still put the same number of miles on the car. Well, this particular one here, the direction sensing sensor, I mean, it can actually look at this wave and tell which way you're headed, you see. If MRE goes high first, I see I put some modified square wave. See, so you're either going to have a square wave that looks like this or one that looks like that. And that's how it knows when you're going forward or backward. Does anybody find that interesting or are you bored to tears? See what I'm saying? Talking about some of the Toyota stuff here. All right. Hall effect sensors, are, they put out a square wave signal, but they're different. They're weird. You basically got 7 to 14 milliamp switch each time these things go by. You got a hall element, you got a magnet. Notice you only have two wires. Got that? Okay, so one of those is going to have voltage. Now on the, on the Dodge Caravan, you don't have just eight volts there, you've got 12. So basically you got current dropping resistors in here. And this thing right here is going to give you a little switch. 
off and on. You can hook into the 12 volt wire with one of them little cheap yellow meters if you're wanting to see if that thing's working and turn it through. And you can see that voltage deflecting. Now be really careful whenever you're troubleshooting wheel speed circuits on some of these vehicles because I have run into situations where I plugged in my scan tool, it told me that the left rear wheel speed sensor wasn't putting out anything and I worked and worked and worked on the left rear wheel speed sensor and I found out that the thing lied to me and it was the one on the right. That will throw you for a loop. So make sure that you devise a way so you can check them against each other. Check this one, hook your voltmeter into it, watch the voltage while you turn it. You ought to see that voltage deflecting up and down. They claim you're supposed to put something in there around one of the wires that will measure milliamps and all that kind of stuff. Not really all that big of a deal to do that. You can do it by doing a simple voltage check while you're turning the wheel on that. And see you got plus and minus there. They've got them labeled on that. You've got a digital output on that. And when you turn it through, you notice when I just took this little scope up using volts with 100 milliseconds, I turn the thing through and you see that little thing right there is what you got. Now, this particular deal here is right till the very end is still going to be telling the module that the vehicle is moving. You got me? Now the problems that you can have with any of these have got to do with your wires getting broke, particularly where the front wheels turn a lot. I don't know how many of them I've seen where the wires got brittle. Every time you bend something a little bit, it winds up breaking it. You know, if you don't have a wheel speed sensor, now, here's another little quick story. One time I had one that was throwing me for a loop because it was telling me that I had a, a, a left wheel speed sensor that was faulty. And so I could not verify that. Whenever I connected it, whenever I checked, all of the wheel speed sensors had the same resistance. And I said, well, this is interesting. They've all got the same resistance. And when I measure AC current, because that's what those were putting out, it was the analog. You know, that's going to read on your AC part of your meter. Uh, I said, I'm getting this, but my module is telling me the left one's not putting out. So I called the Ford hotline, and the Ford hotline guy says, uh, you know, it's throwing me a code from the left front. It's telling me it's not going anywhere. He says, move the wires out of the cavity going to the module and swap the left and the right so that the right is reading where the left ought to be. And he says, if it moves with it, you'll know the sensors are a problem. If it stays in the same place, you know that the module is not able to read that particular in those two cavities and I turned out I had a bad module but that's just common sense stuff right there so anybody got any questions about this very long PowerPoint presentation watch what Zach is doing over there Zach has got a legal pad that looks like he's preparing a legal brief he's right he's taking notes and when you're working on your computer stuff if you want to be smart you'll be doing like him when you're watching this stuff take the notes look at that Zach, show them your notes. Show them how many pages of notes you got. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got page after page after page of notes. And I'm thinking that that's probably a smart thing to do. Because as you write it down, you're going to remember it better. And that's what you're here for, is to remember it better. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, that's the end of the slideshow. That's the end of today's presentation. Who learned something about wheel speed sensors they didn't already know? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody in here. Right. That's what we're here for, isn't it? All right, that was simple and quick.